Class 11 Accountancy Numerical Problems Solutions Presented by Eduxit.com In this video, we are going to provide Depreciation, Provisions and Reserves Problem 2 Solution The problem statement is as follows On July 1st, 2000XA Ashok Limited purchased a machine for 1 lakh and 8000 rupees and spent 12000 rupees on its installation. At the time of purchase, it was estimated that the effective commercial life of the machine will be 12 years. And after 12 years, its always value will be 12000 rupees. Prepare machine account and depreciation account in the books of Ashok Limited for the first three years if depreciation is written off according to straight line method. The accounts are closed on December 31st every year. Before we proceed with the analysis of this problem, let us first do a small recap. In case of assets or expenses or losses, any increase in any of these should be debited and any decrease should be created. With this information at our disposal, let us now proceed with the analysis of the given problem. This problem requires us to prepare machine and depreciation accounts for the first three years. It is also given that the depreciation is written off according to the straight line method. It is also given that the accounts are closed on December 31st every year. This means that the accounting period starts on January 1st and ends on December 31st in the same calendar year. So, in this problem, there is a machine purchased by the business. The machine cost is 1 lakh 8000 rupees. Also, this machine is required an installation and the business has paid 12,000 rupees for installation of this machine. As you know, the amount spent on the installation of the machine is considered as capital expenditure and will be considered as part of the cost of the machine. So, the final cost of the machine will be sum of 1 lakh 8000 rupees and 12000 rupees, which will be 1 lakh 20000 rupees. So, when all these expenditures are made, the machine asset is increasing. As you know, the rule to record any increase in the asset is to debit the corresponding assets account, and hence we should debit the machine account. To proceed with the problem, let us consider that these payments are done through bank. So, as the payments are done through bank, the bank asset of the business will be decreasing. The rule to record any decrease in the asset is to create the corresponding assets account and hence we should create the bank account. So, we need to create the bank account for each of these expenditures. In other words, we will post individual entries for each of these expenditures in the bank account. Also note that the preparation of the general book is not in the scope of this problem. However, let us prepare it as it helps to understand the details well if you prepare the journal book. When you are actually practicing the problem, you can skip the journal book. Let us now generalize these expenditures. Let us first write the title as journal and then let us have the individual columns for date, particulars, journal folio, debit amount in rupees and credit amount in rupees. As this is the first journal entry, let us first write the year in the date column. As we have discussed that the machine is considered to be purchased and installed on the same date, the date will be July 1st. So, let us write the date as July 1st. Let us first write the machine account as the debit entry. Let us also write the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us then write 1,20,000 rupees as the debit amount. Leaving a margin, let us write the bank account entry related to the purchase of the machinery as the credit entry. Let us then write the credit amount of 1,8000 rupees in the credit amount column. Leaving a margin again, let us write the bank account entry related to the installation expenses as the other credit entry. Let us then write the credit amount of 12,000 rupees in the credit amount column. I am skipping the narration or description here. Let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction. Now, when the end of the year is reached, we need to calculate the depreciation on the machine and generalize it. It is also given in the problem that the working life of the machine is 12 years and so after putting the machine for work for 12 years, the machine becomes scrap and the scrap value of the machine is 12,000 rupees. As you know, 
the formula for calculating yearly depreciation is given as yearly depreciation is equal to the cost of the asset minus estimated residential value upon estimated useful life of the asset as we have just already calculated the cost of the asset is equal to 120000 rupees the estimated residential value of the asset is 12000 rupees and the estimated useful life of the asset is 12 years substituting we have 120000 minus 12000 rupees upon 12 this is equal to 180000 rupees upon 12 which is equal to 9000 rupees so the yearly depreciation is 9000 rupees also as the machine is purchased on july 1st and the accounts are closed on december 31st for the first year we need to consider the depreciation only for 6 months and not for one year note that for the subsequent years the depreciation is considered for the entire year and it is only for the first year that the depreciation is considered only for 6 months so the depreciation for the first year which is calculated only for half year will be equal to yearly depreciation of 9000 rupees upon 2 which will be equal to 4500 rupees as you know the depreciation is an operating expense in other words when the depreciation is calculated we need to record the operating expense the rule to record any expense would be to debit the corresponding expenses account so we need to debit the depreciation account at the same time as the depreciation is calculated on the machine the worth of the machine in a year is reduced by an amount equal to yearly depreciation as you know the rule to record any decrease in the asset value is to create the corresponding assets account in this case the machine account should be credited with this analysis at our disposal let's now proceed with the recording of these entries into the journal book the year of the accounting period is same the date is december 31st let us now record the depreciation account as the debit entry let us also write the text dr to indicate that this is a debit entry let us then record the debit amount of 4500 rupees in the debit amount column leaving a margin let us record the machine account as the credit entry let us also record the credit amount of 4500 rupees in the credit amount column to keep the things short i'm not going to record the narration or description here let's just skip it with that we have completed the generalizing of the depreciation related entries at the end of the accounting period let us now proceed with the posting of these journal entries into the corresponding ledger accounts this journal entry needs to be posted on the debit side of the machine account and the debit amount is 120000 rupees note that the details that need to be posted into the particular column is the bank account also note that as the bank account related payment is not a single payment we will not post all these 120000 rupees into the machine account as one single entry it would rather be split and posted as two separate entries one for the purchase of the machine and the other for the installation expenses let us now post this entry into the machine account let us first create the format for the machine account as it is not yet created let us first write the title as machine account Let us then write the headers DR and CR to designate the debit and credit sides respectively. Let us now have the individual columns for date, particulars, journal folio, and amount in rupees on both the debit and credit sides. Let us now write the year in the date column on the debit side. Let us then write the date. Let us then write bank account into the particulars column on the debit side. Let us then write the debit amount of one lakh eight thousand rupees in the amount column. Let us then write one more bank account entry related to the installation expenses into the particulars column on the debit side. Let us then write the debit amount of twelve thousand rupees in the amount column. With that, we have completed the posting of this general entry into the machine account. Let us now take up the next entry. Note here that we are not posting the bank account related entries into the bank account as the preparation of the bank account is not in the scope of this problem. So we consider the depreciation entry as the next general entry. And this journal entry needs to be posted on the debit side of the depreciation account and the debit amount is 4500 rupees note that the details that need to be posted into the particular column is machine account let us now post this entry into the depreciation account let us first create the format for the depreciation account as it is not yet created let us first write the title as depreciation account 
Let us then write the headers dr and cr to designate the debit and credit sides respectively. Let us now have the individual columns for date, particulars, journal folio, and amount in rupees on both the debit and credit sides. Let us first write the year and the date in the date column on the debit side. Let us then write machine account into the particulars column. Let us then write the debit amount of 4500 rupees in the amount column. With that, we have completed the posting of this journal entry into the depreciation account. Let us now take up the next entry. So, this journal entry needs to be posted on the credit side of the machine account and the credit amount is 4500 rupees. Note that the details that need to be posted into the particulars column is depreciation account. Let us now post this entry into the machine account. As this is the first entry on the credit side, let us first write the year and the date in the date column. Let us then write the depreciation account into the particulars column. Let us then write the credit amount of 4500 rupees in the amount column. With that, we have completed the posting of this journal entry into the machine account. Just to reiterate, the depreciation is calculated at the end of the year and it is time to close the books. Now, the total on the debit side of the machine account is 120,000 rupees and the total on the credit side is 4,500 rupees. From 1,20,000 rupees, if you subtract 4,500 rupees, we get 1,15,500 rupees. This is the amount in excess on the debit side and should be written on the credit side as balance carried down. Let us then write this 1,15,500 rupees in the amount column on the credit side. Now, the total on the debit side is 1,20,000 rupees. And the total on the credit side is 1,20,000 rupees. So, now the machine account is balanced in this accounting period. Coming to the depreciation account, remember that as the depreciation account is a nominal account, we will not carry the balance of the depreciation account to the next accounting period as we did just now in the machine account. Any balance of the depreciation account should be transferred to the profit and loss account at the end of the accounting period. You will learn more about the profit and loss account when we deal with the financial statements. But for now, just remember that the depreciation account is closed at the end of the accounting period by transferring the balance to the profit and loss account. With this consideration, let us proceed with finding the totals. The total on the debit side is 4,500 rupees. As there is no other entry on the credit side, all these 4,500 rupees should be transferred to the profit and loss account. To post this, let us first write the year and the date on the credit side in the date column. Let us then write profit and loss account into the particulars column. Let us then write the credit amount of 4,500 rupees in the amount column. Now, the total on the credit side is 4,500 rupees. So, now the depreciation account is balanced. So, we will continue this recording to the journal book and the corresponding posting to the machine and depreciation ledger accounts at the end of every accounting period. As the problem requires us to prepare the machine account and depreciation accounts for the first three years, let's proceed with the next accounting year. To save the time, let's not deal with the journal entries as they will be similar every year. Also, I want to reiterate that during the first year, we consider the depreciation only for six months. But from the next accounting year onwards, we have to consider the yearly depreciation of 9000 rupees. With this information at our disposal, let's directly jump to the ledger account postings. Let's start with the machine account. As our accounting period coincides with the calendar year, the year will be changed and the date will be January 1st. At the start of the new accounting period, the first entry would be any balance brought down from the previous accounting period. Let's write to balance brought down into the particulars column. Let us then write the debit balance of 1,15,500 rupees in the debit amount column. There will not be anything to be brought down in the depreciation account as the depreciation account is a nominal account and is closed at the end of the accounting period by transferring the balance to the profit and loss account. At the end of the year, we will again post the depreciation related entry on the debit side of the depreciation account and on the credit side of the machine account. Let us first write the year and the last day of the accounting period in the date column on the debit side of the depreciation account. Let us then write the machine account in the particulars column as this depreciation is calculated on the machine. Let us then write the debit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. Note here that this time we have considered the yearly depreciation. Now in the machine account, let us first write the year and the date in the date column. Let us then write depreciation in the particulars column. 
Let us then write the credit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. After these entries, once again it is time to close the books. So let us find the total. The total on the debit side of the machine account is 115,500 rupees. And the total on the credit side is 9000 rupees. From 115,500 rupees, if you subtract 9000 rupees, we get 1,6500 rupees. This is the debit balance of the machine account and should be written on the credit side. Let us first write by balance carried down into the particulars column on the credit side. Let us then write the credit amount of 1,6500 rupees in the amount column. Now the total on the debit side is 1,15,500 rupees. And the total on the credit side is 1,15,500 rupees. So now the machine account is balanced. Coming to the depreciation account, the total on the debit side of the depreciation account is 9000 rupees. As there is no other entry on the credit side, this entire amount of 9000 rupees will be the balance that should be transferred to the profit and loss account. So let's first write the year and the date on the credit side. Let's then write profit and loss account into the particulars column as the depreciation account will be closed by transferring the balance to the profit and loss account. Let us then write the credit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. Now the total on the credit side is 9000 rupees. So now the depreciation account is balanced. Thus one more accounting period is closed. And then the following day, the next accounting period starts and the machine account which is a real account starts by bringing down the balances from the previous accounting period. Let us first write the year and the date in the date column. Now the balance from the previous accounting period should be brought down. Let us write balance brought down into the particulars column. Let us then write the debit balance amount of 1,6500 rupees in the amount column. There is no other entry during the year for our case. The next entry would be to post the depreciation at the end of the accounting period. Let us first write the year and the last day of the accounting period in the date column in the depreciation account. Let us then write the machine account in the particulars column on the debit side as the depreciation is calculated on the machine. Let us then write the debit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. The corresponding credit entry would be in the machine account. As this is the first entry on the credit side of the machine account for this accounting period, let us first write the year and the date in the date column. Let us then write depreciation account in the particulars column. Let us then write the credit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. Once again, it is the end of the year. So let us find the totals. The total on the debit side is 1,6500 rupees. And the total on the credit side is 9000 rupees. From 1,6500 rupees, if you subtract 9000 rupees, we get 97,500 rupees. This is the debit balance of the machine account and should be written on the credit side. Let us first write by balance carried down into the particulars column on the credit side. Let us then write the credit amount of 97,500 rupees in the amount column. Now the total on the debit side is 1,6500 rupees. And the total on the credit side is 1,6500 rupees. So now the machine account is balanced. Coming to the depreciation account, the total on the debit side is 9,000 rupees. And as there is no other entry on the credit side, this entire amount of 9000 rupees will be the balance and should be transferred to the profit and loss account. Let us first write the year and the date. Let us then write profit and loss account in the particulars column as this depreciation account will be closed by transferring the balance to the profit and loss account. Let us then write the credit amount of 9000 rupees in the amount column. Now the total on the credit side is 9000 rupees. So now the depreciation account is balanced. With that, we have come to the end of this solution. Thanks for watching. Edixit.com is started to promote effective and efficient learning process to help the students with their learning requirements. To watch all our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Also, please click on the bell icon to receive a notification as soon as a new video is published. Please click on the like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching.